Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today, we're gonna to talk about the most controversial item in the tractor world, this guy right here, wheel spacers. But time and time again, anytime I mention Bora or do a video about wheel spacers, I get the same comment from all the detractors. And so I'm gonna tell you why I think they're being short-sighted in just a minute. And speaking of them, Bora, I am proud to be sponsored by these guys. I am big on safety, and if you are looking for a stability solution for your tractor, feeling a little tippy side to side, wanna improve your safety, that's what we're talking about today. Check them out, you order directly from Bora, there's gonna be a link down below. And you know what, these videos are helpful for a lot of folks that are watching, new tractor owners, so if you have experience with wheel spacers, we wanna know about it, the good or the bad, leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed the video, the way that I know that is if you give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos, hit that subscribe button and make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. All sorts of cool tractor attachments can be found over there and we ship them all over the country. So let's lay out the problem at hand and why people are looking for wheel spacers in the first place. It only takes a few seconds to type it into Google, right? If you just search farm accident stats or tractor accident stats, something like that, you're gonna find the information. It's easy to find. The US Department of Labor says 44% of farm deaths that occur are tractor rollovers. Rollovers, tipping over, side to side. That is a huge percentage of all farm accidents that take place. And so that is why you're gonna see this system here in particular, this is called a ROPS, and this is a folding ROPS, so if you wanna get in your garage, I just pulled mine out of my garage, but this is gonna prevent rollovers from continuously going down a hill. It'll tip on its side when, to, when this is in the up position, it'll just tip to the side and that's it. It's not gonna to continue to roll over and crush you and take you with it. However, you don't wanna to get to that point where you need to rely on the ROPS, and that is where wheel spacers come into play. And a quick pro tip on the ROPS, straight from the manual, always reference your manual, gotta make sure that's in there too. But when the ROPS is up, the rollover protection system is up, you wanna wear your seatbelt. If this system has to be down, say you're mowing underneath a bunch of trees and it's just gonna be in the way, that's when you don't wanna wear your seatbelt. So if it does start to roll, you can quickly hop off. But if this is up, it's meant to prevent that rollover from happening. So you want your seatbelt to be on, so you're staying hopefully within that operator kind of cockpit or confined area here. So the idea behind the wheel spacer is to widen your footprint, widen your stance, not front to back, but this way, left to right, because these tractors are very long and very narrow for some reason. And I don't understand fully why they don't redesign them in such a way to make them with a lower center of gravity, widen it out, just make it more stable all around. But if you're on any kind of hills, it can be very problematic and it can get out of hand really quickly, especially with a front end loader. If a load happens to be up a little bit higher than you thought, or just it moves around or shifts, it can be a very dangerous situation. And I have two inch wheel spacers on my 1025R. It's normally about a 48 inch width, but now with two inch spacers, you're gonna add four inches overall. So you're adding four inches. And so adding that extra almost 10% of stability, even just with two inch spacers, is really gonna make a substantial difference when you're operating on hills. Okay, so this is the biggest pet peeve that I have, probably of all questions that I'm asked, and it's when people say, Adding spacers is gonna shorten the axle life of your machine. That's not a smart thing to do. And that statement can be posed in various ways, but that's the general theme is, you know, putting wheel spacers and, and getting those wheels and those tires further out from the axle is a bad thing. It's gonna negatively impact the life of your machine, where the bearings, where the axle, you're gonna have problems. It's gonna to lead to costly repairs. And so while I'm sure you can search the internet and find some examples of that taking place, I have never personally heard of anybody that's had an issue like that. I'd love to hear from you if you leave a comment down below. But I also sent out a survey. I asked the question to all my followers on YouTube, on Facebook. I wanted feedback from folks, and they've given it to me over the years in videos as well, but I wanted just a big compilation of feedback to know who's having issues with these wheel spacers or what they thought about them in general. And so the overwhelming theme of that feedback I got from my viewers that took the time to comment was that Adding spacers didn't have any detrimental or negative impacts to the axle life or the wheel bearings. They didn't break anything or shatter anything. And in fact, it was the exact opposite. All of them were very appreciative. They loved the additional stability and the safety that they now had on their machine. They were able to do more work with it, that machine as well because it was safer to use in different situations and applications. And so that's all great in and of itself, but that's not actually what annoys me. But what bothers me about that statement is not so much the fact that it could potentially shorten the equipment's life. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know that, I have not heard that from any manufacturer, but you know what? It's a lot easier to fix a tractor versus rolling over and killing yourself or breaking and losing a leg or an arm or something catastrophic to your own body versus a piece of equipment. 
Why would you prioritize a piece of equipment over your own personal safety? That's what bothers me. Angry. Anyway, that's enough. I'm off my high horse now, but I just want to tell you, I'm always going to prioritize personal safety over machine safety. I think you should too. But if you're looking for wheel spacers for your tractor, there's a lot of things to consider, a lot of variables. So I want to run through that checklist really quick so you're not leaving anything out. If you have a mower deck or you want to run chains or you have a limitation or different attachment sizes, let's get to it really quick. I'm also going to tell you why I chose Bora wheel spacers specifically. So we're going to get to that later on too. Okay, so really quick, I'm going to rattle through this. I don't want to keep you long, but a lot of things to think about if you want spacers. I'm going to put a list in the description as well. You can go through that there too. Before we get started, a lot of things you want to think about. You're going to order these directly from Bora. I don't sell them myself. You go to Bora's website to place your order. You can get there through a link down below. You can Google Bora wheel spacers. I've got a link on my website that'll take you there as well. You don't order from me. You order direct from Bora. Probably the most common question that I'm asked or that I get is how do you size them appropriately if you have a mower deck on? Because a lot of the mower decks have those rear gauge wheels, those rear arms that are back there. They're gonna interfere potentially at some point. If you're shifting your tires out wider, are they gonna run into it? You don't want that to happen. So while there's not a clear cut answer, the most conservative way to go about this is measure the space from the outside of the tire to the inside of that closest interference point. So if it's gonna be the arm of your rear gauge wheel or it could be the, the wheel itself, measure that free space. Let's just say it's three inches, okay? Round down to the next smallest size of spacer. Make it a two and a half inch spacer. That's the size you wanna get. That's pretty much, pretty much foolproof. The one mistake people make with that is they only measure one side. Oftentimes those gauge wheels are gonna have a different spacing on one side versus the other. So make sure you measure both sides and then go to the most conservative or smallest size that you need to. Now onto the most probably overlooked aspect of everything when it comes to wheel spacers is attachment size. You know, a lot of you guys on the front or the back are gonna be running a certain width of attachment. Maybe it's just the width of your bucket right now, a rear blade, a box blade, maybe a snowblower. Ooh, I have something about snowblower uh, folks here pretty soon but you gotta think about what's gonna happen. Are you still gonna cover your tracks if you add on a certain width of spacer or do you need to upsize potential attachments at that point if you wanna cover your tracks? So I mentioned snow blowers earlier and really that made me think of tractor cabs. And with tractor cabs, your center of gravity is moving up higher. You know, you have a lot more weight up here versus you know, just this open ROPS bar. You're gonna have a lot more weight making it even that much more tippier. So if you get a tractor with a cab, I can pretty much guarantee anybody who's watching this that has a cab is gonna say it feels a lot tippier than an open station tractor they had previously. So you folks with cab tractors, you are probably even more of a candidate for wheel spacers than open station tractor owners. And again, for you folks running snow removal equipment and GP Outdoors has done several videos on this. He does a really good job. GP Outdoors has just a fantastic channel, um, but he's running a Kubota right now. He's ran, he ran a different model of Kubota in the past, but he runs spacers on his tractor to fit chains on there to put them on in the winter time for extra traction when he's pushing or plowing or blowing snow. So a lot of these machines, they're really tight underneath here on the inside of the wheel well and where the axle comes into play. And oftentimes you're gonna need to put on wheel spacers to get everything bumped out a little bit further to have the extra inch or two of space that you need to run chains. Another consideration with Bora is if you wanna go with aluminum or steel spacers, for the most part, I think aluminum is the way to go. These are anodized. You don't have to worry about priming or painting anything like you do with the steel. They recommend putting an anti-seize on the steel spacers as well. That wasn't really a recommendation on the aluminum, although it probably wouldn't hurt. So it's just a little bit easier product to work with compared to the steel. However, if you wanna get, or maybe you have a larger tractor, like a big four series, where you put maybe six inch spacers on there, if you put the maximum width that you can get, then potentially it's gonna add a lot of additional ballast weight. Um, whether that's worth doing or not, I don't know, but it is a, a potential bonus of getting the steel over the aluminum on those larger tractors that just have more weight involved. I'm often asked what size wheel spacers should I get for my machine? And again, after you've gone through that whole list there of potential limitations or requirements with the attachment size and maybe if you have a mower deck or chains or whatever else was on that list for you, it really comes down to, I think, personal preference after that. You know, you have one to six inch options with Bora. And the survey that I sent out, I would say most folks did two or three inches. You saw some that were uh, over four. I saw, and I've seen this in comments, I guess, uh, even six inch spacers, the maximum width. But for most folks, they're gonna end up in that two to three inch range. Now, as far as why I choose Bora wheel spacers, number one, they're made in America.
And to me, that means American materials and American labor. Number two, they have a lifetime warranty. That means they stand by their product. And number three, they're gonna be hub-centric and wheel-centric, so they are designed to fit everything on your tractor just the way it's supposed to be. And now Bora makes wheel spacers not just for tractors, but they make them for UTVs and all sorts of vehicles as well. So again, if you're looking for an American-made solution to help with some stability, increase some safety on your machine, then Bora is definitely worth taking a look at. Alrighty guys, that's my take on the subject. I think it's way too controversial for what it is. It's increasing operator safety. We should all want that. But I'd love to hear what you have to say about the topic, so make sure you leave a comment down below. I'd love to get a thumbs up from you too if you enjoyed the video. Even if you didn't, still give me a thumbs up, why not? And hit that subscribe button as well. If you're in the market for something for your tractor, whether it's for the front, the back, maybe an accessory, you gotta check out Goodworks Tractors. We have all sorts of cool stuff over there for tractor owners like you. We can ship all over the country too. Well, I guess it's playtime now. We're jumping on the trampoline, so it's time for me to go. Thanks again for stopping by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.